16. It says, Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying, uh, saying to the, the, the seven angels, Pour out the seven bowls of, of God's wrath on the earth. The first angel went and poured out his bowl on the land, and ugly, painful sores broke out on the people who had the mark. And uh, who had the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. The second angel poured out his bowl on the sea and it turned into blood, like that of a dead man, and every living uh, thing in the sea died. A third angel poured out his bowl on the rivers, the springs of water, and they became blood. Then I heard the angel in charge of the water said, You are just in your judgment. You who are and who were the Holy One, because you have so judged, for they have shed the blood of your saints and the prophets, and you have given them blood to drink as they deserve. I heard the altar respond, Yes, Lord God Almighty, true and just are your judgment. The fourth angel poured out uh, his bowl on the sun, and the sun was given the power to scorch people with fire, they were seared by intense heat, and they cursed the name of God, who had control over the planet. But they refused to repent and glorify them. The fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and the kingdom was plunged into darkness. Men gnawed their teeth in agony and cursed the God of heaven because of the pain and the sword. But they refused to repent of what they had done. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the river Euphrates, um, and its waters were dried up the way, uh, the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three evil spirits that looked like frogs, and they came up out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are spirits of demons performing miraculous signs. And they go out to the kings of the world to gather them for battle on the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come like a thief, Jesus says. Blessed is he who stays awake, keeps his clothes with him, so that he may not be naked and be shamefully exposed. Do you see what's going on? That's the seven years. See, what Satan is, it's amazing to me that Jesus and Satan are on the mountain. Jesus just finished uh, 40 days of fasting. And Satan comes to him and starts tempting him. So Jesus like pulls out the sword and hit him with some scripture. Right there. Satan says, I got some scripture too. And started quoting scripture. Right. So it's amazing to me that Satan has gone through the book and he knows what scriptures to use at the appropriate time to deceive you. Right. But we won't read it and we're supposed to use it as a sport. Amen. Lack of knowledge, people are destroyed. So people don't want knowledge. That's why I say, you know, if you can, if you have the knowledge how to save someone, and you say, I don't want to know that, why? Because you don't want to be responsible for their death? Would you say that that person is a coward? Yes. I say that person is a coward. If you have the knowledge to save someone by warning them, you've got the knowledge of Jesus Christ, and you can tell that person, you need to accept Christ. And you need it now. Now the Lord gave me a vision uh, uh, this morning as I was sleeping. And this was the vision. A guy wanted to commit suicide. And he's standing on the ledge of a building and he's trying to commit suicide, right? I asked him, why are you trying to commit suicide? He says he has AIDS. So good, you know that you're sick. That's the first thing, okay? So I say, look, they have cures for AIDS. You can still make it. He's listening to that, but he's slowly backing up. What's the next thing should come out of my mouth? Stop moving. Right. If you keep moving, you're going to fall over the ledge. See, some people are just happy with warning you about your sickness, right. yeah. but they don't want to warn you about the ledge. Right. Yeah. Right. 
The sickness is that you got sick. And there's a cure for it. Right. The power from Gilead called Jesus Christ. Yes. But you got another problem. You standing on a ledge in 2010 and you about to fall over. Right. So which one shouldn't I tell you about? God called me to give this message to the world. Yes. And you have to understand that if you want to be saved out of this, you can't play with this. I got five minutes. So to, with my five minutes, I would like us to go to Ezekiel chapter 8. Amen. Yeah. Good word. I wish I didn't know what I was talking about. You know what I mean? Then I could just be quiet and go, I really don't know. But I'm very firm on this. I'm like, you, you can argue with me all day and we can sit down and I'll show you the scriptures. And by the time we finish, you'll go, wow. So God is doing something. I would love to sit down with anybody and say, show me why this is true. And we can go to 6,000 years of count. <laughs> we can go to the fact that God rebirthed Israel in 1968. We could, I mean, 1948. We could go to 1967. We could talk about what happened in 1917. We could talk about the World War I starting in 1914. Do you know World War I started in 1914? <laughs> And then in 1917, the Belfar Accord came forth and they promised the Jews that we're going to give them the land back. So everything keeps happening on this 14 and 17. Test. 